George Barner with the Barner Group surveyed Christians and asked the question, what do you want your pastors to talk about? Find out the 12 things he said they wanted to learn about. And yes, it's mostly what nobody's teaching at the church gatherings. The results are going to shock you. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Welcome to VFN TV. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and joining me just a moment is John Ramos. We're going to be counting down the top 12 um, from the survey of uh, George Bonner called the American Culture and Faith Institute, indicating a majority of churchgoers feel that, that they want their pastors to be able to talk about and teach about. And then what they want to know, they don't want a, our opinion or the pastor's opinion. They want to know what God has to say about these particular issues. And it's so surprising when you start seeing it. And it's going, to, it's going to encourage if you're a pastor, you're going to see, I need to start talking about these things. Also, if you've been a long-term viewer in our audience, you'll realize we have been talking about these things. And you can uh, find out more about these on at VFNTV.com and the VFN Torch and see some previous programs to be able to get educated on these topics. But the number 12, out of this survey that was done all the way across America, the number 12 thing, the 12th thing, which is 72% of Christians surveyed, and America said they wanted to talk about, they wanted to talk about Islam. Think about that. They wanted to talk about Islam. And what they're saying is, uh, they want to know about the core beliefs, the res response to Islamic aggression, how do we respond with its threats to U.S. peace, and domestic stability. And they're wanting, you know, as a Christian, not as a military person, but as a Christian, you know, how do you respond to these things? And the first thing we have to understand is, you know, what is a di what's, what's, what's this religion? You know, there's a lot of different religions in the world. Why is Islam different than other religions? Well, we talk about that all the time on VFN TV. There's a big difference in, in a lot of different religions in Islam. Islam is like a merger of government. It's political, governmental, and religion all together. It's, it's a, when you hear the word caliphate, they're talking about um, you know, wanting to have the Quran, which is their spiritual book, to be the rules for your nation. That's what they're saying. And 51%, according to um, Glenn Beck's book, It Is Islam, talks about 51% of American uh, Muslims say that they, they agree with a forceful overtaking of America's constitution to put Sharia law over that. So it's very important. We need to find out these things. Well, listen to this. 72% of American Christians surveyed are saying that they want to hear, teach from your pulpit about this. And if you're, if you're worried about losing your pulpit or losing your church building, if that's what you lose when you tell the truth about what's going on, so be it. But the big specific thing you need to know right up front is, you know, that Paul said, is anybody, anybody preaches to you another Jesus, right? Well, Islam believes in Jesus. They believe he was a prophet. They believe that he's going to come back, but he's going to come back and he's going to repent for calling himself the son of God. And he's going to be the servant of their, you know, spiritual leader that, is, you know, comes to, to, to the earth. And he will, this Jesus, they think that they're perceiving, will go around and forcing people to convert to Islam. And the ones they don't, he'll behead them. And that's not Jesus. So we have to know the differences of these things. You know, people can believe those things, but you can believe what you believe too in God. And it's very, very important and so we, we talk about this on VFN TV, and we want you to know about it, but your, ch your church wants you to talk about it, and you need to talk to your pastor. We have an action plan for you. At the end of today's program, we're going to talk about it, that you can, you can go and carry this action plan to your pastor and say, you know, these are things that we want. We'll make, actually make this survey available to you as well. So 72% are saying they won't. 72% of Christians in America surveyed with the number of people surveyed here are saying that they want their pastors to teach them about what God has to say about Islam. And it's pretty, pretty relevant. And understand this too. You know, uh, I believe the numbers are, there's, there's probably only about 4 million Muslims in America. The number's right around the 4 million. But isn't it interesting that the media is making a great boast you know, of these four, four million Muslims that are in here, you know, and, and anybody's welcome to come to America, but the ones who, the people who believe that a caliphate and the Sharia law should be put into place and that the Constitution should be done away with, I mean, we need to be able to say, you know, this is America under the Constitution, one nation under God, and you have to be able to line up with the Constitution there. So we can talk about that from our pulpits and, and tell people about that. Well, the number 11th thing, going from the 12th to the 11th, you know, what are, what are uh, Christians wanting to, 
hear their pastors teach them a biblical perspective. It specifically is church and politics, government, separation of church and state, legal boundaries, uh, church resistance to, to government. You know, you hear this narrative that's been taught, you know, so much about separation of church and state, and you have people that are scared to talk about anything political when they're hanging around other Christians, uh, when they're in their church buildings or from behind their pulpits, and it's like this whole thing is political. It's how the leaders are chosen. And, uh, and it boils down to this, you know, if it comes between losing a, 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 a you know, tax-exempt status or the truth, choose the truth, believe me, you, you, you want the truth. But um, the First Amendment says very specifically, the government can make no laws concerning religion. That is the big thing, that's why it's so important. It wasn't so that the church will stay out of government and so the government will stay out of the church. Well, your people, the people, uh, are wanting the pastors, according to the statistics here, 73% are wanting uh, their, their pastors to teach them about the church and politics and government. And is it true? And it's like, how many people snuff out truth by saying, you can't say that here because this is a school, or you can't say that here because this is a church, or you can't say that. It's, this is about freedom of speech in America. Some of, when you look at the founding you know, of America, you'll find out that it was the, the uh, Black Road Brigade, the pastors of that day, that from, from their pulpits, they preached about all the different things that educated the people how to be able to, to stand up for freedom. And you can look in the history books of America, but also the history books of, of, of uh, uh, Great Britain, and they'll talk about they saw them as a negative thing because that's, we defeated Great Britain during those days. And we're going to talk about the top 10 when we get back from the break. But I want to just to begin off, the first two we talk about is 72% of Christians want their pastors to talk about you know, Islam. You tell me the details about it. What does it mean? How does it affect us? And uh, church and politics and government. First Amendment. What does God require of us you know, as a Christian? And when you look at Romans chapter 13, verse 1 through 5, he says very specifically, you know, God establishes government, but he doesn't establish government to snuff out his voice. He established gov government to be his servant. And, um, and when it comes between you and a man, another man and God, you've got to choose God. You know, over man, if they're actually saying, you know, you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that, and God says, you know what, you've got to do this, even if all the world doesn't want you to stand Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even if they're going to throw you in a fiery furnace, I expect you to stand, you know, for God in love. Welcome back, and this is amazing. You know, amazing. It's, you, you think about this, that God chose through the foolishness hmm. of what is preached to win the world. That's right. And if that's the method that he chose, and we're not applying that method, we're how are we going to win? We're not going to win the world. You know, and somehow I think today's culture in the church is like, oh, osmosis, just hang around and somehow you're yeah. just going to know something. But I can't talk about that if I mm -hmm. talk about that. And, um, and so what are, the, what are the people in this survey saying that they won't talk about? And this is important. Yeah. These are people that actually live in the real world. You know, they have yeah. workplaces. Yes. They are they go to ball games, they interact with society, and they have friends themselves that they're trying to reach and so they, they need answers. They do. As a matter of fact, number ten, the top the, the top ten, seventy uh five percent as you're seeing right here on your screen. You can see it on your screen. Yeah, seventy five percent. You know, self governance, the biblical support. Thank you. The biblical support personal conduct, impact on freedom, and national sovereignty. I mean, you think about this, that, you know, America is about self-governance. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that's not being done right now. You can't tell someone, no, you need to grow up. You need to take care of yourself. You know, you need to be self-governing. All your rights come from God. You know, you we have a constitution you know, you need to be able to understand you're a citizen. The first thing you find out when you're a brand new citizen is you find out you need to vote. You know, you find out that taxes are due on April 15th. This is part of the citizenship test mm. and the government, how government works. And so many people are trying to find some hero to come in to, to, to rescue them, not understanding that it's all of us working together in self-governance. You have That's to right. be able to govern yourself. And so you're seeing people saying, you know, big government. What does big government mean? Big government means I want government to regulate me. I cannot be self-governed. I need to be governed by a government, which makes mm -hmm. more laws on how you, you know, what you can do with a pond in your backyard now. I'm a crazy 
you know, uh, regulations, regulations upon regulations. You have yeah. to have a in certain cities. You got to have a license yeah. just to have a, a dog or a pet in your yard. <laughs> yes, you do. And even ponds. And it's just really wild. You know, Cass Sunsting talked about that. Mm. We had that, you know, in our program when he first entered into the scene, he said that I can write a, you know, we can write, we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to change anything, basically. So the paraphrasing. You can write enough regulations that can accomplish right. it the same way. And they've been writing nonstop, you know, since you got in. That's so, by regulations, right? <laughs> so, then, so, the, so then, you know, Christians are saying they want their pastors to talk about self-governance, which as a Christian you would say, you know, you need to be able to repent. you got to be able to be disciple. But how difficult is it to, to even talk to Christians in America about, you know, you're going to need to, to hmm. be a disciple of Jesus. You're going to need to All find right. out what he says about your life and live your life that way. And it's like, oh, okay. All you mean right. read my Bible? <laughs> That's so old. And it's like, we're not going to have a nation without yeah. understanding that. And so there's the Christians are saying, you know, I guess they're basically saying, you know, quit, you know, criticize them and start teaching me about it because I don't know about it. Because mm -hmm. they're asking self governance, 75%, John, are saying, I want to be taught it's about huge. this. It's huge. And God just expects us, He holds us individually accountable before him for our lives. You can't blame your spouse, your parents, your children, your pastor, you know, some bully or some political party. You stand alone before God. So even if people say that there's no self-governance, God expects you to govern your That's life right. according to uh, his mercy and his grace, but in light of what he says. And then you have uh, the ninth, and the ninth is 76% of uh, Christians surveyed so they want to hear about bioethics, cloning, uh, euthanasia, genetics, engineering, um, cryogenetics. cryogenetics, organ donation, and surrogacy. And you think about this is what's going on with the baby body parts from Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. They're sending out all these cells and limbs, and they name off all the body parts, lungs, livers, livers under a big demand. Um, just, what do all tragic. these things have in common? It's all about supporting life and, right. and people living longer and maximizing. Right. The question is, you know, why do you want life? What what right. are you going to do with the life that you have? But I mean, these are things you got to talk about. Right. What's the root of this? And I think the fear of death is one thing we're not supposed to have as Christians and that you should teach about, you know, so many things. Everybody's trying to live, not realizing this life is a vapor, but we spend eternity with God. Yeah. We're preaching, you know, that Jesus died he was raised from the dead. Then he went to go where we're going to be mm -hmm. with him to That's prepare right. a place for us. And so if we're not preaching about uh, the the eternal life, eternal come, life right. then the, what's the purpose? You know, Paul said we should be pitied more than mm -hmm. anyone else. So all this, you know, uh, for example, organ donation, you're talking about, is that a positive thing or a negative thing? And uh, uh, they want you to be able to, to talk about that. Some people think, hey, you know, if... Uh, I'm sinning if I donate my liver or something like that mm -hmm. in my at my point of death. Uh, genetics, there's cloning where they're cloning, they're growing body parts. You know, during our internship, you know, we talked about you know, they're growing ears and dishes, petri dishes off mm. of cells they're getting. They're growing um, a bladder. They grew a bladder, and you're like, you got to really say, you know, where where is it? So we where teach, are we headed to? <laughs> where are we headed to? And the church wants to know about that because this is what they're facing. 30% or 30 so percent of the abortions that are taking place are taking place by people who profess to be Christians, right? Not only that, but where is this going with, if you if you watched our program, Ray Kurzeel, I mean, with, with robotic parts that are being, they're trying to attach them to, to human beings. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're talking about having a, a RoboCop. That was just something you saw in the movies at one point. Merging and, machinery and man, and what does that mean? And we're, it's, it's we we think about, you know, knowing more and doing more than we're better. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, it's better to know less and be more loyal to God than know everything Come and be on. disloyal to That's him. That's right. Remember, it was the tree of the knowledge, tree of knowledge of good and evil, mm. he said, don't eat from. And the more we pursue knowledge, he says, knowledge puffs up. And mm -hmm. so understanding, you, you can talk about this. You can ask your pastor to, pastor to talk about what does God's word really say about this? And he says is that my sheep will know my voice. They won't know all knowledge. That's right. They'll know his voice and he'll talk to you. Uh, number eight is uh, the role of government. Government, 76%, you know, uh, survey from Christians in America said they want their pastors to talk about the role of government, biblical view, uh, church state relationship, uh, personal relationships, uh, personal responsibility, I mean, and uh, limitation. 76%. Wow. John, 76%. 
you know, talked about that. And it's like, wow. you know, what is that? What is the role of government? And government has a role, but if you'll ever look, if you, you know, we, the president talked about it at a prayer meeting. He said, let's not forget about the crusaders and the inquisition. You know, we need to learn our history hmm. because the inquisition was over 600 years where people in the name of the church would government, the church was government and the government was church. And this is why our founding fathers are going, don't mix them too. Cause it's not good because they would literally disembowel people hmm. till they would make their loyalty to the Catholic church. They call it the, to her lady. Wow. And they did it for 600 years. That's like, that's like John, that's like 75 to 80 popes straight in wow. a row. 75 reports are documented. And they were trying, this is when government and religion mixes, where all of a sudden the, the church is government, the government's church. Mm -hmm. And um, you got to say, what's the role with this? And you, if you study history and you say, well, that happened during the, the Crusaders, it happened during the Inquisition, and it didn't end up well. That's right. Because they were trying to get people to confess their their rebellion to the Catholic Church, uh, and because they were actually believing that you could find God through faith alone <laughs> and read the scriptures and you could follow scriptures literally. And they, they, I mean, the reports are, John, that entire villages were killed. Mm. Everybody in that village who were living by biblical principles because they thought they were in rebellion to the, to the Catholic Church, to yeah, the, the to, state. Well, to, to be against the state would mean to be against God. Right. It would, it would be, um, um, I forget the um, heretic. They would yeah, consider heresy. them a her heresy yeah. and heretics, and so they would kill them. And so it's very important to understand what's the role of government. Well, right now when you start seeing people giving up all this, trying to give up religious freedoms or trying to take it, you're looking at that same tension. It doesn't end well for those who, who surrender. You know, And it's interesting, too, that the First Amendment has to do with freedom of speech and it has to do with our religious rights, mm -hmm. our rights to have faith. And to openly not be dealt, government can have anything to do with it. Well, mm -hmm. if you understand the Inquisition, you understand this is why. If you understand the Church of England, yeah. what took place, there were being, you know, terrible things were happening to the pilgrims when they were fleeing to America trying to find a place to be able to run. And that statement, the, the church and state has to do with Thomas Jefferson. It has nothing to do with, it's not even in the Constitution. It was in a letter that he wrote to the Anabaptists yeah. addressing that issue. So yeah. it wasn't even... It's and it's not, even, not it's the not Constitution. Constitution. So the Constitution says specifically. And that's the reason we study history. See, so you, you need to ask your pastors to begin to teach what's a biblical perspective of the government, uh, the role of government. The seventh is 79% uh, in the seventh, uh, number seven out of the top 12, is Christian heritage, the role of Christian faith in America, history, the church role in the U.S. Uh, development, uh, modern day uh, relevance. relevance. Looks like we've been talking about this yeah. on VFN TV. Yeah, I mean. we talk about these things. <laughs> you know, one one good um, series to get on role of government and Christian heritage is maybe, maybe it's called the Heritage Series. Yeah, I think so. By David Barton with Wall Builders, but you can show the videos if you can't teach it. You know, David Barton did an excellent job mm -hmm. about the heritage and where we come from. He's got the Heritage Bible, I believe, called the Founder's Bible. that talks throughout the entire mm -hmm. Bible with different leaders that we had in the Scripture. And it's like, David, this is what we do. All of us know in part and we prophesy in part. If, you, if your pastor can't teach on this because they don't know it, and they might not know it, you know, there's different giftings. And your pastor might be really good at, you know, loving you and being there with you and praying for you, but he, he or she might not be... A teacher, they might not have sure. ability to do that. You can just get the video, the DVD. You don't. Everything doesn't have to be said in some religious way. Right. Just watch the videos. <laughs> Never watch VFN TV. So we're going to be talking about what is the in the survey that George Barna did of the tr Christians in America. Mm -hmm. What do they want their pastors to be talking about? And you had the top twelve. We were on the the sixth one, and the sixth one that they the top six. The sixth one was eighty percent of Christians surveyed in America, this is what they want their pastors to talk about. Mm. They want to talk about Israel, its role in the world, Christians' responsibility to Israel, U.S. foreign policy towards Israel, and its enemies. 80%, wow. John. Sounds like an educated, biblical understanding <laughs> of what is going on right now. Sounds like VFN TV. You need to share yeah. VFN TV. If, you know, if right. your pastor's <laughs> not going to talk about it, understand God's going to hold you accountable for for understanding it, and you can watch it. We have thousands yeah. of of segments that we've done on these different topics. Islam 101, mm -hmm. you know, the 12th thing that the church wants to hear about and be taught about. We pastors, You tell your pastor they can go to vfntv.com, go to the torch, and there is a area there they can go to that says Islam 101, how mm -hmm. to understand, and it compares Islam and Christianity. 
Muslim Brotherhood 101, that's there as well. I mean, mm -hmm. All that's there. And, um, but to understand how, what, how it applies in, and, and, um, and right now you're looking at the enemies of Israel where our leaders are um, partnering with the enemy. I mean, it's difficult right now, John. I mean, you have, uh, you're praying for Israel, and you, you, we pretty much always pray, and Lord, that you would prevent, you would destroy the enemies of Israel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or that you would stop there, you would turn confusion on the enemies of Israel. But right now, the Amer America is us. an enemy of Israel. The <laughs> yeah. American leadership has made decisions to partner with Iran for this nuclear. I mean, you need to know about that because right now your representatives are saying they they are going to approve this uh, treaty, but they're not calling it a treaty, mm -hmm. but a nuke deal with Iran. And it says, reports are, that America would have to defend Iran from anybody that tried to attack them. Well, Israel's going to have to defend themselves, which, by the way, it's just like right next to each other, Yeah, which means... We would have to fight against Israel based on that agreement, mm -hmm. trying to defend Iran, who says they want to push us into the sea. I mean, uh, you know, to p destroy Israel, push them in the sea, right. and destroy us. That's right. And it's like we need to understand a biblical perspective of that. It's very important to understand Israel because whoever blesses Israel was blessed, and whoever curses Israel is cursed. If you want to destroy your nation, harm Israel. Yeah. And yeah. there is a Christian responsibility to Israel. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. that was very refreshing. That that's something yeah. that the church wants to know because we're going to be held account accountable for what we did and didn't do. Right, right. You and, know? and we have many t teachings and talks and programs on that as well. But you also have Kufi, Christians yeah. United for Israel, that's standing up for Israel. We partner with Avi Mizraki in, in Tel Aviv, you know, with Do Good Ministries yeah. there. You want to find yourself. You know, standing with and standing for Israel. That's one thing that we definitely do in this program. We have over 600 dedicated segments, individualized segments with related content and articles and just video and so much information just on Israel alone. It's a great resource for you. Right. And uh, we're getting to the, the fifth. What is the fifth uh, top five things of the fifth? What are the fifth? Number five. Number five. <laughs> yeah, number five. Eighty-two <laughs> percent of the church surveyed in America to the survey they want to hear about sexual identity, same-sex marriage, transgender, marriage, and LBGT, which stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transsexual. Trans. Transsexual thing. Transsexual. Yeah. And so they're wanting you to talk about this from your pulpits and to teach them what does this actually mean, and. Um, there's just gender dysphoria going on, mm -hmm. and if you don't tell somebody who they are, the enemy will tell them who they are. If you don't show them by your own life, then they will try to find identity somewhere. And it's so interesting how, you know, the enemy's always there to say, "Hey, join my gang," you know, yeah. "join my thing," or do this type of thing. We'll talk about that. You know, how did God create us, male and female? How did, what does God's word say about mm -hmm. that? Why does He say that? And what is the purpose of two becoming one flesh? You know, Malachi 3.16, he says, to bear godly offspring, not for you to have a great time in your whole life. It's actually right. there's a purpose That's to raising right. godly offspring. And, and and sex was God's idea, so we need to find out what God says, you know, and, right. and talk about it in, in that perspective. I think John Piper just addressed something like that on the Christian Post, which is really great. Yeah, and in, in the church understanding this, we're not saying that the world needs to do something. Mm -hmm. This is strictly about Christians wanting to hear how they're supposed to live their life That's right. Out. That's right. But right now we have all this dysphoria going on and all these different dysfunctions and uneducated aspects of our lives going on while their church is trying to rebuke the world. And it's like, that's not going to work. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. God didn't call us to change the world. He called us to win the world one soul at a time. And so we got to begin to find out what he says. And, and the church is saying statistically mm -hmm. that's what they want. The number four, 83% of the church said, and the fourth thing, the highest thing they wanted to talk mm -hmm. about is um, culture restoration, mm. you know, restoring the culture, um, appropriate morals, law and order, uh, defensible value and norms. And what's, mm -hmm. right, defensible yeah. value and norms and self-governance. We've talked about that already. But, um, you know, culture restoration, what does that mean? You know, I heard somebody say, you know, in America when you're starting to see you know, racism rise up, and somebody mm -hmm. says, well, that's racism. And I said, um, I didn't say where it was, it wasn't, but I said, what about Japan? You know, Japan is not allowing anybody else to come and become a citizen of Japan. It's all Japanese. Mm -hmm. And they said, the same person said, oh, they're just preserving their culture. Yeah. And it's like, wait a minute. 
You know, and it and it comes to a point. It's like you can join America, but join America. Don't have America join you. That's right. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.